So you know, to be mighty, folks, and we need to hang around people. And you know, to Daniel, to be mighty, he hung around his friends. He chose his friends wisely. And you know, sometimes we'll take and, and a little lady at church come to church and said that she'd lost some friends, but she gained a family. So you know, folks, it's important that we choose our friends wisely. And also, uh, to be a, a true friend, it takes time. Somebody's been there through thick and thin. Uh, when you got money, when you ain't got money. <laughs> when you got groceries, when you ain't got groceries. I mean, a true friend to be there, you know. And the, the scripture says there is a friend that stick of closer than a brother. To Jesus chose 12 ordinary men, but after they'd been there three and a half years with him, they were accused of turning the world upside down. So you know, uh, to be great, in order to be great and to be mighty for God, we have to hang around some great people and some mighty people. We let slip our confidence. Our sin will separate us from God. An evil heart, a heart full of unbelief, we don't believe God will hear. Unforgiveness, we won't let things go. We stir up trouble. An hour of prayer to God is still one hour. No shortcuts. You know, to us, we live in a microwave time. But to, to pray an hour, and can you imagine in the book of Acts chapter 3, it says the hour of prayer. Peter and John goes to the temple to pray. And they were going to go pray an hour, a whole hour. To Daniel, no doubt, prayed three times a day or three hours a day. But there are times, and one scripture says he prayed for 21 days, fasted and prayed and sought God. So that, that's a lot of days. That's a lot of hours if you add them up. But an hour of prayer is still one hour with God. Jude says we can build up our confidence, our confidence level, by praying in the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, I know God hears me because I obey him. To the rich young ruler, what one thing stands between you and God. And you know, here we get how great, how great God is, that usually there's just one thing in our life that, that he's working on. But he's constantly doing a work in our life. It might be our temper. It might be a unforgiveness. It might be a, a sickness. It might be a pain. But usually there's just one area in our life that, that he's working on. And you know, folks, when you get that fixed, then you're, there's going to be another one. <laughs> so you know, as long as we're on planet Earth, God will be working. And we may do good for a few weeks, and then here comes, you know, a, a pride, or here comes envy, or here comes strife, or here comes murmuring, here comes complaining. So you know, we have to get all that under our feet. The rich young ruler says, what one thing stands between you and God? Is it worth losing your soul? Is it worth losing the soul of your children? We have been given the authority to use the name of Jesus down here on earth. Jesus will use our name up there in heaven. Jesus said for us to ask anything in his name, and he would do it, to ask anything that would bring glory to the Father, and it would be done. Little word, confidence. Jesus said if we love him, we would keep his commandments. Are we to live? We are to live without guilt and condemnation. If a heart condemns us, it says, then God is greater than a heart. But if a heart condemns us not, then we have confidence that our request is made known. It means something to have confidence when you stand before God. It means something to have clean hands and a pure heart. It means something to know the word of God and, and take God as word. You know, the scripture says, if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching any one thing, it shall be done. The scripture said that what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So you know we have the, the authority and the ability to bind and loose what we permit on earth in our life. God says, I'll permit it too. So you know when we stand against sickness and we stand against sin and we stand against Satan, then God says, I'll stand with you. And you know in Hebrews chapter 2 also it says, What is man that there are mouth of him? Or the Son of Man that you did visit him. You've made him a little lower than the angels. You've crowned him of glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands. That's, that's God's part. And it says, but also it says that for that he did put all things in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not under him. So you know God's part, man's part. And, and I know some say, well, that's speaking of Jesus. And it does a little later on. But speaking about Adam in the garden, said he gave him dominion. So let us uh, make man in our own image. Let them have dominion over all the earth. And we find of all the things that God created, you know, the fish and the fowls of the earth, but also the principalities and powers and, and, and the, the, the things in the heavenly realms. God has given man authority even over that when we learn about them. 
But God is so great, folks. How great a God that we serve that he would think of us, that he'd be mindful of people even in TV. Boy, that's pretty amazing, ain't it? It says, if our heart condemns us, then God is greater than our heart. And you know, there's there are times, and, and I know that there are some, it says to receive a, a, a weak brother, but not to dapple disputions. And what it means, you know, sometimes our conscience is weak. 